want to bring in one of our colleagues now, Ted O'Brien, who, who joins me. Uh, Ted, thanks so much for your time. I didn't Thank know you, this uh, about Karen Andrews, and it just shows you, doesn't it, that there are a lot of things going on in people's lives that we just don't know about. Isn't that the truth, Laura? You know, um, I think what we've seen with Karen is enormous bravery there. Uh, this is real, it's, it's raw, and, um, and it's overly prevalent. And this is why, as a parliament, we need to continue doing, uh, in a very bipartisan fashion, what we did in the last term, which is prioritise domestic violence. And, um, and full credit to, to Karen Andrews for speaking so bravely in the House about it. Um, and hopefully that sends a message to other people who have been victims of domestic violence that they're not alone and that um, the, the Parliament stands as one to address this scourge. Yeah, and it seems like this has certainly been talked about by major political parties and minor ones for, you know, the better part of, I, th I would say, the last two terms, maybe three, first and foremost. But it is a difficult thing to, to eradicate. But can you sit here today and say that politicians actually get it? Obviously, Ka Karen Andrews does. But is this a, a bipartisan priority? Oh, look, I think it is. I'd go beyond saying bipartisan. I'd say it, it, uh, it does unite the entire parliament, mm. regardless of political stripe. Um, I can't speak for every politician, but um, hand on heart, I, I do think people get it. I really do. Um, to, to differing degrees, of course, given mm. people's own lived experience, um, which, which is fair enough. Um, but certainly in, in my time here in the parliament, I have only seen an enormous amount of goodwill uh, among all parliamentarians when mm. it comes to, to tackling this one. That said, um, when you look at things like domestic violence leave, which there was a bit of a debate around, uh, seeing Karen Andrews today makes you think, well, it's such a minor thing to, to pass domestic violence leave. Many in your party didn't support it. Was that a mistake? Oh, look... Uh, you know, the, the party and individuals take positions for, for different reasons, and it's not for me to, to sort of, you know, double-guess that. Um, I think one of the things that you said there is, is something we need to um, really um, leverage, and that is we're speaking about this. And over the last, probably the last decade, um, not just as a parliament, but as Australians, we are speaking about this for too long. Um, domestic violence was something that went, went unspoken. Um, but now we are trying to grapple with it. Uh, there are no easy solutions, but the, the starting point must be a, a very united focus on, on tackling the scourge. It's what we did in government, and I think the expectation will be that that's what the current government does. Um, and again, full credit to Karen Andrews for uh, speaking out um, so powerfully, I thought, in the parliament. Indeed. Let's talk about two reports out today that we should take notice of. One, the OECD warning that we are in the worst energy crisis since the 1970s. At the same time, the CSIRO says Australians are facing hotter summers, longer bushfire seasons, less rain and more drought. So sandwiched in the middle, uh, Ted, is climate change and how quickly we move to renewables and how much it will cost. So where do you... Uh, sit between those uh, reports. Um, renewables are the answer, but not right now. Is that your position? My position is that we need a balance. And if we are to have an orderly transition to a decarbonised economy, you have to get things balanced. Um, otherwise, either prices skyrocket um, or you keep prices at an extraordinary low, but you don't decarbonise the economy. It's an ongoing balance. Um, I, I read the OECD report. Um, I know the, the CSIRO. I've read the reports this morning just in the newspaper. Um, this is why we have a choice as a nation. Either we take a balanced, orderly approach to decarbonising the economy, or we go down the path that Labor is now setting us on which is a disorderly path, 
which is leading to skyrocketing prices, a grid that is wobbling and is not reliable, and we don't even know if it's impacting on emissions. Now, this is a very different approach to that which we took um, as a government mm. uh, only in the last term, where we saw prices come down for households, businesses and industry. Really? Uh, you emissions can't really rest lower. your laurels on that, looking at where we're at right now. There's, there's, there's no resting of laurels and nor should there yeah. be. But, um, but, but, uh, but, but the but Ukraine just to, war in terms started of, before the election. We could have seen where yes, this gas crisis yes, was did. heading. Yes, it, it, it Indeed, the, the Ukraine war did start, uh, you're right, before the election. And all through that time, as that tragic war raged, the Labor Party looked the Australian people in the eye and promised them that they would reduce power prices. For households, $275, their bills would come down. Now, that was in full knowledge of the challenge of the international crisis um, that we're seeing in energy. That was in full knowledge of the challenge here in Australia. Labor promised they would get prices down. Mm. They have failed um, and they continue to fail because they have this extraordinary speed and scale of a renewables rollout, while at the same time killing off gas and welcoming a premature closure of baseload power. Again, you need to get the balance right. Um, renewables are important, but we need to set them up for success, not failure. Labor's setting them up for failure by killing off gas and having the premature closure of baseload power. OK, Ted O'Brien, we'll have to leave it there. We'll check in soon. Thanks so much.